Sorry to break it to you, but most sports supplements don't work, but some do. So let's talk about the three that I recommend. Welcome back everyone to Inc. Nutrition, where we are all about mind, body, and food. My name's Jack, I'm a sports dietitian, and I'm here to help translate the science of nutrition so that you can live a happier and healthier life. So as a former collegiate athlete, Ironman triathlete, dietitian now for several years, I have been surrounded by supplements, which by the way is a multi-billion dollar industry. And it does make sense to me because elite athletes will always be trying to get an edge. But in my professional opinion, I really only think there are three ergogenic aids, supplements that can directly improve uh, performance, which are also safe, legal and give you no or little to no side effects. And that last bit is important because there are certainly things out there like you know blood doping, steroids that can work, right? They can give you uh, more muscle, they can give you a, an edge in performance, no doubt, but are they safe, are they legal? No, there are also supplements that are pretty well studied like um, bicarbonate, beta alanine, that are decent, but I do think cause some side effects that just aren't worth it. So let's talk about the three that I recommend. First up, for those interested in improving strength, power, and even muscle mass, we are going to talk about the famous creatine, which is well studied, it is safe, and it is effective. What is it? Well, it is a natural compound found in the body which can provide energy for quick, intense exercise, aka weightlifting. How does it work? Well, by taking creatine monohydrate in the form of a dietary supplement, you can increase your body's natural storage of creatine in the muscle, which can allow you to be just more explosive for longer. Hence why it's typically recommended for power athletes over endurance athletes. Now remember, you're not gonna just gain muscle mass from taking creatine by itself. You have to pair it appropriately with a good weight training program. I also wanna point out real quick that we are seeing some cognitive benefits of taking creatine because creatine is found in the brain, but that's a subject for later. Now, what are the side effects? Well, there really are no serious side effects. You may experience weight gain, either from an increase in muscle mass, which is probably what you're trying to achieve anyways, or an increase in water weight, because creatine can bring in some water into the muscles. All right, so how much should you take? Recommendation would be three to five grams of creatine monohydrate every day. You don't need to treat it as just a pre-exercise supplement. You can take it at any point during the day, but it is important to be consistent with it so that you can build up that storage uh, of creatine in the muscle, right? And saturate the, that creatine so that you can really take advantage of its full effect. Some people like to recommend this loading phase of creatine, like 20 grams plus. Uh, for a few days. I don't think that is necessary and I think that can increase risk for some GI issues. So three to five grams is the recommendation. Also, I do recommend always sourcing sports supplements from a third party tested company. So look for NSF certified for sport or informed choice. Those can almost guarantee that what you are taking is both safe and pure. It can't 100% guarantee it, but it's the best thing we got. All right, so creatine, fantastic for strength, power, muscle mass. The next supplement I'm gonna recommend is for improving endurance performance. That would be dietary nitrate or beetroot powder. So dietary nitrate, what is it? It is a natural compound found in a lot of different vegetables, most famously in beets. All right, it's also in some leafy greens like arugula, uh, but when we look at the research and you know what we supplement with, it typically is beetroot juice or beetroot powder. So how does it work? When you ingest dietary nitrate, that is converted to nitrite, which is then converted to nitric oxide. Okay, now that acts as a vasodilator, which means that it can expand your blood vessels, which in theory can allow for more oxygen to be delivered to your muscles, which can allow you to work harder for longer when it comes to endurance activity. There's also a positive effect on your mitochondria and making it more efficient. So for those two reasons, 
we have determined that it's a very safe and effective supplement for endurance athletes to improve yeah, aerobic capacity. I would recommend it if you are competing or if you are an endurance athlete for any event longer than 30 minutes, okay? Even up to you know multiple hours. Are there any side effects? Very little, okay? So if you have the beetroot juice instead of the beetroot powder and you have a lot of it, it can cause some GI upset just naturally. Also, you may see a little bit of a pink, an orange hue within your urine, uh, which is very natural. If you just ate a bunch of beets anyways, that would that would happen. So very harmless, no, no worries. Okay, so how should you take it? You can either have about eight to 12 ounces of 100% beetroot juice a couple hours before exercise, or I think the more practical approach would be uh, a beetroot powder. So a teaspoon of beetroot powder in water, um, one about 30 minutes to one hour beforehand would be great. Super Beats Sport is a great brand that I would recommend. It is NSF uh, certified, so check that one. And finally, we have the most studied substance in the history of research when it comes to looking at performance. One that can both improve strength and endurance if used appropriately. Caffeine. So I'm pretty sure all of you know what caffeine is and there are literally mountains of research to support its benefits, but it's important to know how to use it appropriately in the right way. First off, how does it actually work? Well, caffeine is a stimulant to the central nervous system, which uh, can not only give you a direct boost in energy, but it can also reduce the perception of fatigue. And finally, it can improve uh, the contraction of your muscles. So for all those reasons, we definitely like to look at it for you know its potential to improving performance. All right, so how should you use it? Well, first off, you can get it in a few different ways. You can get it, of course, in a natural way from coffee, from tea. Those are gonna be the big ones. Chocolate as well, but I wouldn't recommend that necessarily pre-exercise. Uh, and then you can also get it from a lot of different supplements, a lot of gels, bars, powders. It's in so many different products these days. How much should you have? I would recommend 100 to 200 milligrams, about 30 minutes to an hour before exercise. That should be optimal. You don't wanna have too much, okay? So I wouldn't go more than 400 milligrams a day or 200 milligrams at any one given time. A couple things to note. First off, you can definitely build up a tolerance to caffeine. So the more you have, the more you need to feel the, you know, the similar effect or to get the same benefits. So I really recommend you to use it strategically when you really want to use all of its potential. Also keep in mind that based on your genetics, you may respond to caffeine in a different way, which is why I think caffeine dosage should be personalized. And then finally, what are the side effects? There are some, mostly, you know, they come if you have too much, right? Like what I was saying, more than 400 milligrams a day or 200 in, in one sitting. Uh, but the big one is sleep, right? Disturbing your sleep, increasing irritability, increasing anxiety as well. Uh, so with the sleep, I wanna point this out. Caffeine has a half-life of about five hours, so it can stay in your system for up to 10 hours. So if you have it at, let's say, you know, two in the afternoon, uh, by, what is that, midnight, you would probably still feel the effects. May not directly, but your brain is still working and it's keeping you awake, so that could definitely impact um, your sleep quality. All right, there you have it. Those are the three supplements that I recommend if anyone is trying to directly improve their sports performance. Anything outside of that, I just don't think it is worth it for a variety of reasons. Having said all that, I gotta give you a disclaimer. All right, everything I mentioned today is really just for educational purposes only. Um, I'm not giving you any direct advice, all right? If you are interested in supplementing with anything, consult with your healthcare provider, with a dietitian, and go from there. Thank you everybody for watching. Really appreciate it. Again, my name is Jack, sports dietitian with Inc. Nutrition. If you have any questions or any suggestions for more content or other videos, let me know. Drop it in the comments below and I'll get back to you. All right. Thanks everyone. Have a delicious day and I'll see you next time. Speaking of caffeine, so because of those two re re reasons, or from increased water rate, water, water rate, water weight, water weight, water weight. Water weight.